He said, therefore, I'm going to cast you out this land. You got to go. You're going because you're worse than your daddy. You out sinned your daddy. You out lied your daddy. You've out snorted your daddy. You've out drank your daddy. You've out hold your daddy. You've out, you, you, you've out heathen your daddy. I mean, you, your, your generation is worse. He said, so you got to get out of my land. He said, and you're going into a land that you don't know. Which means he's talking about more than just Babylon. Why? Because Babylon to the north was known by everybody. If I had a map, I would show it to you that Babylon is right on the other side of the promised land. It's on the same landmass. This is prophetic when he says you're going to a place you didn't know and your fathers never knew. Well, how could you mention that about Babylon when the fathers of these people came from Babylon? Remember, Abraham came from Ur of the Chaldeans, which is which the first city built after the flood was Babel, the city of Babel, where we end up with the word Babylon. So they everybody knew about Babylon because they knew about Babel. So when he says you're going to a place that you never even knew of or your fathers, he was talking about the slave trade. That our ancestors, you Hebrews, had to suffer on them ships. According to Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68. And the verse literally says that there you will be sold as bondmen and bondwomen to your enemies and no one will buy you. In other words, once you are sold into slavery, there will be nobody to buy you out. See, that was the hope of every slave is that if I do get captured, you know, hopefully my cousin will find out I'm captured and my cousin will tell my uncle and my uncle will call my daddy and they will all get together and raise some money and then come get me. But he said, no, no, where you going? Won't be no early to come get you. <laughs> The only way you're coming out of those out of that captivity, I I'm gonna have to come get you. Uh, this is how I'm able to see the plight of the true Hebrew Israelites, the bloodline descendants. Because the same thing that happened in our first captivity when we were in Egypt, we started growing and multiplying and it scared the powers that be. Yeah. And they said, we got to stop this by doing what? Killing the boys. Yeah. Right? And then all I got to do is read the history in this country and find out what they're doing in order to keep the Hebrew Israelites down today is they target the men. And that's easy to see. I also can see in the in the in when you get to Babylon, which was another one of our captivities, they also killed the men. Okay, then I can do another comparison. I say, all right, uh, in Egypt when we got set free, it was not because we started a war and fought Pharaoh and was delivered by our might. No, we were delivered by Yah's might and his power, right? All we did was put the blood on the door and the next morning walk out and walked out rich. I wish I had a witness. The second slavery we were in, the biggest one, which is Babylon, again, did we come together as a group and overthrow the Babylonian government and the kings? No. King Cyrus rose up one day and made a decree. Y'all get out. Why? Oh, I read my name in your book. And your book said that when I became king, I was going to let you go. So, see you. Say, well, where are we going with? We ain't got no money. Well, what do you need? We need to rebuild our temple. Well, go to Lebanon and get all the wood you want. Wait a minute. We didn't fight to get out the first slavery. We didn't fight to get out the second slavery. Then the third big slavery is again here in the United Snakes of America. And after serving our time here as bond men and bond women, slaves, 
when it was time for Yah to set us free from that bondage, did we as a group come together and overthrow President Abraham Lincoln and take over the government with swords and knives and staffs? No. No, 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 no. When it got time, Yah just said, all right. He did two things. He had the captors fight each other. He did. It was called the Civil War, y'all. They fought each other. And before we knew it, they was coming out in the country talking about, Joe, you can go. Go out and go where? Because Joe, he's still turning over dirt. There has been a what? Emancipation proclamation from the President of the United States proclaiming the emancipation of all of the Negro slaves. And, and, and Joe's on the back of the shovel said, I don't know what the emancipation means, that word's so big. And the proclamation, I don't know what you're talking about. He said, Joe, you free, man. He said, I'm free. And he went to throwing down shovels and rakes. <laughs> He's out. The only difference is, when they left Egypt, they were able to go where? To the promised land. Yeah. When they got out of Babylon, they were able to go where? Back home to the promised land. And now that we got out of this bondage here, the only difference is we have not yet been taken back to the promised land. So can you see it on this level of comparative? As you go and look at the curses of Deuteronomy, um, after uh, chapter 28, after verse, say, 15 and on, through 28, 29, and 30, you read those chapters, and you will see almost a history. It lines up a parallel with us, and we have to walk out all those curses, and I mean all of them. Yeah. A lot of people have experienced some of those curses, but no group on planet Earth have lived all of those curses except the Hebrew Israelites yeah. that have been taken in them slave ships. Yeah. So that's a level of interpretation. That's not taking scripture out of context. That is a level of interpretation that puts the scripture in the context so we can deal with us now. Do you get that, Zion? 